What's up you guys, it's Pritam here. So today I'm really glad that one of my first reaction video is going to be live really soon. So today's topic will be the algebra of happiness. And this reacting series, I would uh, find out more interesting uh, videos that will help me uh, in my life and will help me for the future time. So I hope it will give some value to your life and give some purpose. And these are really very practical information. And if you really understand what the author is saying, then I think it will be very beneficial for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. This semester, 170 second year MBAs whose backgrounds range from IT consultants from Delhi to Marines from Athens, Georgia, are enrolled in brand strategy. So on the batch, this is a professor. I think he is uh, like was, I'm not really sure, but he is a professor for NYU, New York University. And I think he's a marketing specialist. It may be wrong, but I will put those details in the screen. We often hear from the course topic, brand strategy. What I'm most comfortable discussing, life strategies. I have no academic credibility or credentials that indicate I should counsel people on how to live their lives. Like that's gonna stop me. The arc of happiness. Your childhood, teen, and college years are the stuff of Han Solo, beer, unprotected sex, and self-discovery. Pure magic. From your mid-20s to your mid-40s, however, shit gets real. Okay, this is really a practical advice that I think what he's trying to say that he is saying from 10 to 20s, our arc of happiness. So as you can see, this one is our arc of happiness. It was like we are expecting and we are experiencing a lot of new things. But let's see what he's saying on the 40s. Work, stress, and the realization that despite what your mom told you, you likely won't have a Hollywood star or fragrance with your name on it. As you age, the stress of building a life you've been told you deserve begins to take a toll. Then in your 50s or younger, if you're soulful, you start to register your blessings, acknowledge your mortality, and begin affording yourself the happiness you deserve. So in adulthood, if you find you're stressed, recognize this is a normal part of the journey. So what is it saying that uh, when we are an adult person, like after our 20s and when we grow growing up and we are having a lot of responsibility, having a lot of work, I can say, guys, first hand experience right off the top after finishing college, I started working and I have those experience that, you know, I'm thinking like overthinking sometime but i think that this is the time that a little bit of stress and work pressure and you know uh imbalance on your work life so yeah and just keep on keeping on happiness waits for you sweating versus watching the ratio of the time you spend sweating versus watching others sweat is a forward-looking indicator of your success Show me a guy who watches ESPN every night, spends all day Sunday watching football, and doesn't work out, and I'll show you a future of anger and failed relationships. Yeah, so this is really right. When I look at a lot of uh, intelligent people, one of my favorite uh, is Naval. Naval Ravikant, who also came here in the United States and when he was a really young kid and he got his education from here and he is now a very big a uh, very big persona on that extent. So what happened? He said one time that uh, it's uh, doing is better than watching. Reading is better than listening. So you are actually doing stuff than watching other people sweat. I think he that he was trying to say that that we generally often watch people making greatness, like Michael Phelps making records in Olympics and Usain Bolt and stuff like that. But Instead, uh, I think that we should more uh, like we should focus more on doing that rather than uh, watching that that happening. You know, like if you want to do something, I would just say just do it. Show me someone who sweats every day and spends as much time participating in sporting events as watching them on TV, and I'll show you someone who is good at life. The myth of balance. We all know someone who's successful, in great shape, plays in a band, is close to their parents, volunteers at the ASPCA, and has a food blog. Assume you are not that person. 
If you want to be economically in the top 10%, much less the top 1%, you should plan on spending 10 to 20 years working and not much else. So what he's trying to say here, like, listen, when I was in college, I, I did not really care about what is going to be, but I had on the back of my mind that what is going to be, uh, maybe able to, am I able to get a job or secure a job or maybe it's going to be a good salary, stuff like that. But it wasn't not really real on my mind. I, I had a personal life and college life. I did not really care. But after I started the, started to take my step on the workforce, I really understand that you know, having a girlfriend, having talked to mom, uh, dad every time at the family, mostly mom that where I like call them and talk with them and go to work, do all the stuff that I was not doing back in my back in my college time, like laundry, like cooking and also grocery shopping, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's not really, you know, disastrous, I would say. I would rather say that it's really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pavement that is making, uh, that's making us stronger day by day. I have a lot of balance now, in large part because I had almost none in my 20s and 30s. Work, partner, friends. Most students devote their greatest efforts to shaping their work lives and socializing with their friends. However, the most important decision you'll make is who you'll choose to partner with for the rest of your life. I have several friends with impressive careers, wonderful social lives, and a spouse they love, but they aren't happy as their spouse isn't their partner. They're out of sync on their goals and approach to life. My friends who have less economic success and spend less time with friends, but have a real partner to share their struggles and successes with are tangibly happier. Okay, so he's really, he's talking the truth because uh, if you look at people, successful people, not like, you know, uh, those who are getting divorced, like recently, I would name, I would not name names, but what he's trying to say that you build up those relationships, what I understand that you spend time and it's, it's like, you have to spend time with your another partner that whatever it may be that you should spend enough an amount of time to understand each other because a lot of people will come and go instead of your family and your partner uh, on your life but um, those are uh, not like really you know i would not recommend to you know like share all the personal stuff you will have some someone that you choose uh, and spend the time with them, and then you will understand it is it is so valuable stuff. You know, to, it gives you a mental clarity to uh, focus on the job on hand. You know, if you have a lot of things going on, if you are preoccupied on your family life, on your marriage life, I would say I really, really, really don't like to have you know like cross path to my mom or my uh, girlfriend. So I, I I won't. I just don't. I just don't do it because if I do it sometimes, I would not able to focus what I'm doing right now. So yeah, it's really important that we follow that. Passion, values, and money. The best marriage partnerships I know of are synced up on three things. They're physically attracted to each other, sex and affection establish your relationship as singular and say, I choose you. You also need to ensure you align on values, including religion, how many kids you want, your approach to raising children, and who handles which responsibilities. Money is also an important one for alignment. Does the other's approach to and contribution and expectations about money flowing in and out of the household foot to your expectations? Yeah, this is a great thing that he's telling us the practical about it, you know, like I have heard when you don't have the money, the love will go out of the window. It happened. It happened most of the time because uh, money cannot buy you everything, but money can buy you the thing that money can buy in that sense. So it is necessary for your food, for your shelter, for your clothes and stuff like that. So you need to make a responsible decision, with whichever you go partner with, what kind of job you do and what your financial goals and all this stuff. Zip code plus credentials. We have a caste system in the US, higher education. Economic growth is increasingly clustering around a handful of super cities. 
This is the peanut butter and chocolate of economic velocity. Advice here is simple. While young, get credentialed and get to a city. Both get difficult, if not impossible, as you get older. There will always be great stories about Steve Jobs, Jay-Z, and other college dropouts. Again, assume you are not that person. Yeah, it is really right. Like, you know, I have heard about Elon Musk that he says uh, a lot of things. You don't really need a diploma or maybe an MBA or maybe something. Do your startup. You can do your startup. But I would recommend that if if I am listening to Elon Musk and I'm listening to this guy right here, I would do a little bit of both because I would try to make my startup because I don't have any really uh, work-life balance. I, I should not have. When I was working on my, on my early 20s, early, early, early 30s, stutter. So, so what I'm going to do, I would try to get some credential on the other side. I probably do some online courses that will keep me on track. And I will probably work maybe extra two hours after I go, after I go back home from my work on my project that I would love to share with the, the whole world. So I think I would do a little bit of both. Uh, I think credential is really important to get you, get you promoted sometime. You really need it. Even though you have a lot of experience, it can be a pivot to your journey, you know, uh, it can be a pivot to your journey if you do not provide at the certain time some sort of credential that you are, uh, you are uh, what you claim, claiming you are. Money and happiness. There is a correlation and money can buy happiness to a point. Once you reach a certain level of economic security, the correlation flattens. So yes, work your ass off and get some semblance of economic stability, but take note of the things that give you joy and satisfaction and start investing in those things. Yeah, so investing, uh, I'm, I'm doing it by myself. I know the value and uh, everybody should know a little bit about it. And if you don't know about investing, first of all, you don't really need to know. You just need like one or two books to really understand the foundation of investing, which is uh, like uh, really easy once you already read through the books or maybe gather some advice on that field. And yeah, money at certain extent that he is saying it is, it can buy happiness, but really it cannot buy you real pure relationship, love, and a lot of things that it cannot buy, but it can be a really, really important tool to your life. I think that way it is a tool that that you can use it to improve your life and be uh, financially secure uh, with the upcoming you know with the unnecessary you know accidents that are happening a lot of days compound interest einstein is credited with saying compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe the notion of putting money away is most important to the cohort that least understands it young people Start putting away money early and often. Think of it as magic. Put $1,000 into a magic box, and in 40 years, boom, it's 10 to 25,000. If you could have this magic box, how much money would you put in it? Yeah, he's right again about the investing that if you are like young, maybe starting to work and just 20 years old, and you, you know, I guarantee you, you cannot get financially free just by uh, working for a company or just by working in an organization. It is scientifically proven that you cannot, you cannot. The more you will uh, get your wages high, the, the salaries are high, the more you will spend a little by little, a little by little. So you need to start because of the compound interest. If it works for you, you can be very rich, my friend. Finding your gorilla. Feeling masculine has been hugely rewarding to me. As a younger man, I felt masculine by impressing my friends, having sex with strange women, and being ripped. As I've gotten older, being a loving and responsible head of household who provides for my family, being a good citizen, and voting makes me feel strong like bull. In some, be a man and not a boy in a man's body. Yeah, so what he is trying to say that be a man and not a boy in a man's body. So when we grow up, we need to make our behavior 
grow up as well because we cannot make rash decision decision what is going on uh, around us we need to be a really a rational thinker and uh, some extent that you need to be very uh, very mature whatever decision you are thinking and making for your next step always always equity equals well it's difficult to obtain economic security with just your salary mm -hmm. as you will naturally raise or lower your lifestyle to match your current income as soon as possible, buy property, stocks, and try to find a job that has four savings through a retirement plan or better yet, options on the firm's equity. The definition of rich, passive income that's greater than your burn. My dad and his wife receive about $50,000 a year from dividends, pension, and social security and spend $40,000 a year. They are rich. A number of my friends earn between one and $3 million, have several children in Manhattan private schools, an ex-wife, and a lifestyle fitting of a master of the universe. They spend most, if not all of it. They are poor. By the time you're 30, you should have a feel for what your burn is. Young people focus on their salary. Adults focus on their burn. Okay, this is a really, really important. And what is he saying that I can really understand? That I was thinking that if I get like 50,000 rupees in India, and if I like, that is like, I can be rich, you know, but that was a very, very, very amateur uh, thinking of mine uh, as I came to understand that if you can earn money, you need to you need to hold it also in a very, very sacred way because you there is always tendency to spend it to alcohol. The Harvard Grant study is the largest study on happiness, tracking 319 year old men for 75 years and looking at what factors made them less or more happy. The presence of one thing in a man's life predicted unhappiness better than any other factor, alcohol. It led to failed marriages, careers coming off the tracks and poor health. When I was just out of college, living in New York City and working at Morgan Stanley, I'd go out every night and get drunk at a very cool place with what felt like other successful people. It felt natural. However, alcohol made me a mediocre person. I would spend the better part of the next day feeling like trying to find a conference room to grab an hour of sleep, only to feel well enough for an hour in the afternoon to recommit to going out again and getting drunk where Fun Scott would show up. Take stock of your relationship with substances. If they're getting in the way of your relationships, professional trajectory, or life, then address it soon. Okay, so... Fun fact, I was watching today, uh, there was a guy, uh, uh, he is uh, from the Great Britain or maybe UK. So his name is Sadiq Gilani and he is, a, he is a very, very, very efficient guy. And what is Scott Galway, Professor Scott Galway just said that take control that what is going on to your life. You need to be really ready. Your body should be in a divine, divine, perfectly uh, well to focus on the job and what you are doing. If you really lose your traction and go out of track, if you're doing alcohol and on, you're go, like going to work on the next day and feel really ba bad, you cannot, again, you cannot give your 100% because at the 20s and 30s, the work will give you the money that you can save. That you need to understand. Things versus experiences. Studies show people overestimate the amount of happiness things will bring them and underestimate the long-term positive effect of experiences. In sum, drive a Hyundai and take your family to Africa. <laughs> He's right. Actually, I'm trying, to be, uh, I'm trying to be a minimalist, but it is hard nowadays, even though I know some, some principle that I can follow and always I try not to buy stuff that I don't need. I feel like I will need them, but I actually don't need. So this is a very good guide from whatever, whoever said that word, that don't buy things that you don't, won't need. You need to give yourself at least two days if you wanna buy something. On those two days, you will understand that you actually really don't need that. Or if you need that, you can go ahead and buy it after two days, but most of the time it's works. Success equals resilience over failure. Everyone experiences failure. Everyone experiences tragedy. You will get fired. 
lose people you love, and likely have periods of economic stress. The key to success is the ability to mourn and then to move on. I had a marriage fail, businesses go bankrupt, and lost the only person who at that point knew loved me, my mom, all before I was 40. But blessed with a great education, good friends, some talent, and the best zip code in the world, the United States, for me, these were obstacles, not barriers. So what it says right here is that success equals to resilience over failure. And this is such a right thing to say. I would say that at, at some moment, at, at like when the pandemic hit, I was going through a lot of stress. I lose my job. I gave some interviews, maybe five of them. I didn't hear back from any of them. I hear back from one of them. And it got canceled after they let me know that we are pausing the hiring because of the COVID and because of the overflow of the employee. So what happens? I did not. Uh, at, at that point of time, mom was really mad because they took my interview and also they did not contact me for uh, like they did not send me an offer letter. But I told her that it's going to be fine. And, and, you know, those times that you as a person build character and as a character is a such a thing that we only only get to avail when it's a it's a really tough time in our life thing is ever as good or as bad as it seems market dynamics trump individual performance so your successes and your failures aren't entirely your fault the number one piece of advice seniors would give to their younger selves is they wish they'd been less hard on themselves. Your limited time here mandates you hold yourself accountable, but also be ready to forgive yourself so you can get on with the important business of life. So finally, he, he is like speaking very practical stuff that sometimes we just uh, like, you know, we are really hard on ourselves sometimes, and I do too. And I think that I should be more generous with myself and all the stuff that I do. I would love to uh, free up myself and uh, give myself some room to think and just say, okay, next time it's going to be fine. Next time you have choice every day. You have chances every day you're waking up. You have chance. You have the chance to make that day better. So forgive yourself and move on. As an atheist, I believe this is it, that when near the end, I will look into my kids' eyes and know our relationship is coming to an end. And that's okay, as it motivates me. A recognition of the finite nature of life is a blessing. It focuses you on loving, forgiving, and finding the gorilla. So that's how he wraps it up, that loving forgiving and finding the gorilla uh, the gorilla is metaphor for like us becoming grown up and do the right things and be responsible and all those stuff so this was a really nice video for me i don't know how it's, it's gonna look like uh, when i'm gonna make it live but i wish that you got a lot of answer and a lot of practical answer if you please uh from this video so i would think that you should apply these on your life that uh, the answer is re like really practically uh, when I got here in the US uh, one thing I learned that everybody is so specific about everything they have checklists they have a lot of stuff that already like stated on a piece of paper so the operation goes like butter so that's how I think everybody should follow it, but I know everybody is not the same, but still at the some extent, if you want to be successful in your life, I think you should follow those advice. And thank you for today. I will see you next time. And you can follow me on Instagram and thank you.